Yeah, also, I want to try and make an attempt here at coin shrinking. I want to get more bang for my buck, so to speak. I don't know, it's made out of the right metal. It's a soft metal, but I may be too thick. This may be too thick to crush, but we'll see. It's the best size dowel I could find for a one dollar coin. Wrap the, wrap the coil around it, it's really thick wire, tape it up and I put it there. Let it charge right up. I don't know, I hope this is going to hold. I haven't um, charged this any longer than 30 seconds. I was uh, a bit afraid the um, flyback or the um, capacitors on the ZVS inverter might burn out. But we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I just got to wrap a nice big little thick chunky coil around that and tape it up. Let's see if we get a result. Now, viewers, I always had a brief test off camera and uh, one dollar coin didn't do anything. One dollar coin is definitely too thick. Definitely too thick. We'll try a nickel coin. Probably not going to work because I think it's a harder metal, but it's a lot thinner. So let's see. I'll just give you a close look at that coil down there. It completely obliterated my coil. And zoom into it. Without moving the camera too much. You can see there that coil, copper coil, that's a fairly heavy gauge copper co uh, mains uh, building wire. And it vaporizes it like a human hair sized fuse. So let's uh, try this 10 cent coin. It may not work, it's a uh, nickel, but it's a lot thinner. Let's see if this does nothing. Let's see if it can crush this coin. Get that out of the way. Alright. Before I go any further, safety checks, everything's fine there. Okay, we're good to go. There you go. 10 amps. Let it charge. Let it all 12 amps. Yeah, buddy, that's it that inverter. There we go, still 11 amps, still charging. Thank you, bud. That was a big bang! Fast oh, like the yes, discharge! The kind of backs discharge. Damn, yeah, that was a big bang. Discharge safety first. I think I dumped the whole bank. But I still had the uh, ZVS connected. Then I disconnected the ZVS and I went to discharge and no discharge. And I have to let that sit for five or ten minutes to dissipate all of its charge. Because I think my uh, connections in that jumper lead might have failed. I can't discharge for some reason now. Let that sit for five minutes before I approach, so let that bleed down, internal discharge resistors do their job. And I'll come back in about five or ten minutes for safety reasons, so we'll come checking that thing after um, later on. See if we've got any results. About five or ten minutes later. What about ten minutes for extra safety margin? Look at that, eh? Completely blew it to smithereens. It's the biggest bang yet I've had from this bank. The biggest bang yet. That's why it's important to have a rag around it because that could have easily gone into my eye and penetrated you like a bullet. So safety first here. Energy to do it, but no, nothing happened to any of the coins. Yeah, I can't concentrate the field enough into these coins. Didn't even bloody disturb them one bit. Hmm. Since this net is buggered, no final read ever on display. That's it. Yeah, nothing happens. So, I've got bloody 30 of these bloody meters, so this one doesn't want to do anything. Can't get no reading, won't do nothing. This is error on display, that's it. So I'm going to jump the potentials up. Capacitor bank through there, chunky wires through there, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, let's do a power surge this way. Let's see how this one reacts to a power surge. <laughs> oh yeah. Hooked up accordingly. Let's give it a um, good surge test. 
Like in this battle, there's something wrong with it. No, I just got an error on the display. I can't do nothing, this is error. That's all it says on the display, so practically useless. I've got a million of these bloody meters now, so plenty of parts. Let's uh, give it a good simulated power surge. But it's never ever ever going to see this much kilowatt hours being used in its entire lifetime. <laughs> oh yeah. I could have put it up, up the right way, but the risks. There's no blast shield there, and it's just for safety reasons. I'm going to put it upside down like that. All right, let's finish this meter off. Now, the most amount of energy this is ever going to see. Safety glasses on. Earmuffs on. Safety glasses. Alright, before I go any further, the chicken sticks it up. Short that out. Connect the inverter. Charge up. And she's going to hopefully get a good bag. Alright, 10 amps. Here the oscillation to the inverter pretty good over the gym, I'll say. Starting to go down a little bit. Get a good charge in this back. Fifty one. Whoa! Epic! Oh yeah! Look at that! Phenomenal! Phenomenal! Ha ha! That was a good bang. Short the bank out. Said the S inverter is in isolated. It's connected. Always short your bank out before you disconnect your high voltage charging circuit. Ha! That is phenomenal! Good thing I use my um, safeguards and hid behind that door wall safety glasses. Safety is very important when doing these sorts of experiments. Ha! Oh, good thing I faced it away from the camera. Yeah, I got a medium baker like cases anyway, but look at that! Ha oh, ha! Oh, that was awesome! <laughs> That'll teach you to meet, to meet in my electricity usage. Ha oh, look at that! Look at that! Didn't break the LCD though. <laughs> that was a world class bang. That was the best bang yet. Let's see what damage on the board. Is shorter there? Those MOVs did their job. Get some resistors to flash those resistors over. Made in Israel. Tadaran. Yeah, good quality components on this thing. Those capacitors are now going to be okay. It's this um, main power supply here. Those metal oxide resistors are designed to, to clamp that energy, and they clamp that energy really good. That is just a phenomenal amount of energy I've released out of this bank. The amount of megawatts, I don't know, 30,000 volts from that transformer. Yeah, running quite cool. I'm happy with that. So, a TV transformer, that's for my, uh, I don't know. Average size TV. That's probably at least a 40 kV transformer. That one. You go by looking at what's written on the cable though. 40 kV DC. I think they overrate these cables a little bit. So let's say it's 30,000 30, volts into 256 microfarads. That's 112,500 joules of energy. If I charge it all the way up, so got to about here, drop down, and went back up. So if the by the time this thing would have fully charged, the current would have dropped down to about 5 amps and maintained somewhere about here. But uh, this thing's driving this transformer so hard, I don't worry, this might burn out. Because that ZVS inverter does drive those trans TV flyback transformers pretty damn hard. Look at that! Phenomenal! Phenomenal! My links, yeah, they're all intact. So I just went through the, um, the phase in. Just these three wires here to the power supply itself, the meter. Look at that, those MOVs did their job. They're designed to clamp that energy. And they clamped a phenomenal amount of energy. I blew a component off the board there. Epic. Yeah, if it was a sort of meter I could find, what's left? Some there and some behind there. 
Yeah, it was all over this place. So there's pick up all the bits I could find. That was a phenomenal bang. A bit of bake a lot there. That's a bug. <laughs> there we are. That was phenomenal. That really cleared its error log. Really cleared its error log. As part of the wire, no copper in it, because it's all vaporized. It's more down there, more here, of the, the baker light. That was a phenomenal bang, though. That was a good bang. <laughs> yeah, that uh, teaches, I think, the medium energy. There's more here. Yeah, this thing did have a fox. And this said error on screen. I could not even get a reading in of it. Nothing. Would not do nothing. No matter what button I pressed or what I unplugged from here, nothing. Just said error. Let's see, it was a 40 volt, 3 phase, 4 wire, 50 hertz meter, 10 amp, max 100 amp, 10 watt hours per impulse. It got a hell of a lot more than 10 watt hours. 2001. Type Q4A. That's a model of the meter. Damn, that went bang. Let's observe the circuit board. Oops. There we are, there's the rest of it. It's all I could find in there. There's that little uh, power supply designed to take the, uh, those MOVs clamped a phenomenal amount of energy. And those resistors were wire around. And you can see, they're not wire around anymore. They're literally open circuit. There's some of the wire out of the resistors. Just vaporized it. Absolutely vaporized it. Underneath that board, below a trace. Below a little trace there. No damage in the main board, just metal flash. Here you are, metering. Here you are. Good quality components. I mean, they got a good backup battery, so good capacitors. Really high quality components. There's where that wire was, that blew off, and that uh, filter ferro ring was around it. That vaporized in the process. It went bang, big time. More vaporized copper. Yeah, that was a hell of a lot of energy going through that. These CTs could be fun to play with there. Another ferro filter ring in there. And there's where the current gets picked up, gets selected through those diodes and gets picked up, sent to the range of the meter. More vaporized metal on the side of that. Unbelievable. More Dale brand resistors, high quality stuff. More there. Yeah, I think I just cleared its error log big time. There we are. Those lights would have had a hard time keeping up with flashing. What energy that would have went through that. That was one man's bell shock, big time. This has got the shock of its life. A shocking amount of energy went through this. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.